Hello and welcome to the Homeschool Conversations Africa podcast. Here we discuss homeschooling from the African perspective and the unique challenges that come with it. If you're considering homeschooling, we hope to inspire you as you take this bold step. If you're already a homeschooler, we are here to share encouragement for this wonderful journey we are on to educate our children in the best way we can. We are your host, Jifa Andam and Harissa Nete Marvel. Let's dive right into today's conversation. Hello, dear listeners, and Happy New Year. We are excited to be back with you this new year, 2022, on Homeschool Conversations Africa. We just want to say thank you to all our listeners once again for sticking with us the previous season, season one, um, since we began. And thanks for sticking with us through the Christmas um, episodes as well. And now we're excited to bring season two to you. And we're going to be discussing many different uh, topics that will be relevant to you in your homeschool. And even if you're not homeschooling, there are many things that you can learn from this podcast to apply in your home with your children as you educate them. So welcome again. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Carissa to welcome you as well. Thank you, Jifa. Hi, everyone. And uh, Happy New Year once again. Um, we hope that you are blessed by this season and all the many topics and guests that we have lined up. Um, today, we are going to kick off our first episode of season two with a conversation about organizing your homeschool in terms of organizing your space and organizing your curriculum and your your mind to face the new school year. So we hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um, so Jifa, would you mind telling us how you get prepared for the new school year? Um, sure. So technically, um, this no, is not, not a new, new school, school year, year for yeah. every, everybody, right? <laughs> it is yeah. for some people. So, so we know that we have friends in places like South Africa, I, I think in Kenya as well. It's a new school year mm. um, for, for those in Ghana as well. I think the school year has just been changed. So it's also going to be a January to December school year due to COVID. Mm. But then in other places, it's uh, September to June or July. So, and for homeschoolers, it can be whenever truly. (laughs) So um, don't worry about the, you know, what we are labeling it, but this is kind, this is just a good time. It's the beginning of the calendar year. And so it's a good time to reflect even if you're halfway through or if you're beginning well that's wonderful so it's a good time to do an assessment of what you've done so far Mm -hmm. um, figure out what's working what's not working uh, try to make adjustments to make sure that things are, are moving along smoothly and your children are having the best experience that you can give them yeah so what was the question for me again (laughs) (laughs) So what, what do you do? Um, I mean, maybe you don't have so much to do, but coming off of Christmas and the new year, what do you do to get back into the flow of school? How do you organize? How do you prepare yourself? Yeah, so it's, um, yes, getting to the end of the year. But well, for us, it was quite busy and, you know, things just began to fall apart a little bit <laughs> in terms of keeping things in order because mm. there's just so much going on Um yeah. And then we've had Christmas and New Year, and here we are. So I have um, had to do some organizing, reorganizing. I'm not quite done, Mm. but um, just thinking, just thinking through this first semester for us. It's not quite over yet, but it's almost over. It'll be over in a couple of weeks. Mm. And what, um, what I would like to change, I was just things that I do at uh, this point. I try to look at their schedules. Um, the plan that we laid out at the beginning of the year, try to see how well we are doing on that. We kind of know that as we go along anyway, mm-hmm. but this is a good time to see, well, we wanted to get through this math book this year. Um, we are about halfway through. Have we 
gotten through the book? Have we gotten halfway through the book? Mm. If not, what are we going to do? Do I need to make some adjustments in the number of lessons we are doing? Or in other places, do I need to slow down because I realized that I maybe my expectations were unreasonable mm. um, to begin with? Because one thing that I think it's important to always keep in mind, at least for people like me, if you have a personality like mine, I think I've said this before, sometimes there's a tendency to just want to get things done, like let's get it done. We said we are going to do it, so let's do it. So let's check it it off, (laughs) you know. But I keep having to remind myself that the goal here is to ensure that learning is happening Mm. and it, it doesn't matter how slow that is. Would I would rather we go through slowly and be sure that they really get what it is we are doing as opposed to rushing through and checking off a list and then coming back and having problems yeah. later on. Yeah. So that's one thing that I do um, at this point in time. And when I'm looking at this too, I have to think about things like travel. Um, for us, that's a big thing because... Um, we're currently not living in our home country mm-hmm. and so we do make time to travel and so I have to think of when we'd like to take a vacation and how that's going to work with school and mm-hmm. um, what what can we do when we are on vacation if anything and all all that kind of stuff so um, those are just a couple of things mm-hmm. I do at this juncture what about you uh, so for me, um, a lot of the organizing had to do with our space as well. Uh, so I needed to create new spaces. So I spent a good week or two in December um, cleaning up, doing a deep cleaning. I had a friend who owns a cleaning company come over and help me to really clean up the place um, declutter. Yeah, that's always nice. Yeah, it, it was good. Um, declutter a lot of things. Um, I had to rearrange a few things, create a desk space for myself so that I could also like work on producing materials and things for our school year and also record the podcast. <laughs> and yeah. um, so, and then I also wanted to make sure that the our books were in order and the uh, um, Kara's toys and her room was also in order just to make sure that like during the day I don't have to think too much about organizing and cleaning like so much if you get what I mean I feel like yes this this gave me like a good clean start and then we could um, continue from there so after organizing the space then I started to put our materials that we needed together so that's making sure that we had all the books and supplies um, mm. that we need for the school year and uh, we're we are starting like a light preschool program this year so um, it, it comes with a lot of books and then we have a few crafting um, things that we crafting projects that we need to do as well so just making sure okay. that I have all of those supplies um, putting them all together you know in like little containers so that things don't get missing <laughs> and that is so important <laughs> And then also, um, then I, I started to do a lot of, or I started to do more of like our actual material. So one of the things that we add into our school days is what I call the morning menu, which is like... Mm-hmm. Um, circle time? Something like circle time, yes. But it's more of, um, that's where we do a lot of our memory work. So our oh. um, catechism um scripture Mm -hmm. and yeah stuff like that so I needed to like and it's like on a monthly basis I needed to figure out um what we are doing for each month and then print print off those pages make sure that they were laminated things I needed to bind I binded them so it's been a lot of like secretarial work going on (laughs) it's been yeah but it's so necessary I feel like I'm I'm quite prepared for what's coming up ahead and like go also going through our curriculum to know what which books we're using for each week what activities we are doing um i created like a little um overview sheet that gives like like 
let me note down what books we need what activities we're doing what supplies we need so when i grab it i know okay i need to get this for this month i need to get that for that month i love that idea yeah, it's, it's that's an good. excellent idea yeah mm-hmm. an overview sheet huh? mm-hmm. maybe maybe you could give a i don't know sample template maybe yeah, you could put yeah, something that, like yeah. that that, out I, on I our Instagram page, Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yes, for for our listeners. Yeah, um, I think sure. that that's what, usually I just end up doing that in my planner week mm-hmm. by week, mm-hmm. trying to <laughs> track. <laughs> but something like that, something yeah. like that would be awesome. Yeah, I I I totally agree with you. Trying to lay things out mm-hmm. ahead of time it's so important because mm-hmm. I noticed that. When I'm not organized, when I don't have things in place, it disrupts our school day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yes. and and this this is organizing things that are not tangible, like, and as well as organizing our books, our supplies, mm. and things like that. And so, a little bit later on in the show, we're going to get into the details of that. I'm trying to give you all ideas in case there's anybody who's having a hard time or need some ideas on how to organize their space. It doesn't matter what space it is, whether it's whether you're using your dining room table, a little mm. table somewhere in your house, or you have a whole room. Yeah. I have found that even when you ha- have all the space, even now that I have all the space, if I'm not careful, it just gets filled with stuff and, mm. and then you're still not yeah. very productive. Yes, because things aren't in place in until way, yeah, in place very important. Mm-hmm. And and I also want to make another point, which I think is is very important in when it comes to the children, because if things are in place and things are organized, apart from the homeschool day running smoothly for both parties, parents and children. I think it helps the children to be more independent because even with kids as little as Kara, if they know, you know, as as, um, they grow up, they know that, okay, here's where I go to find my shoes, right? This is in the bedroom. Here's where I find my clothes. It can be the same way in our homeschool space Mm -hmm. as well. They know that this is where I go to find pencils. Pencils are always here. Mm -hmm. Apart from teaching them to be organized themselves as well, it also helps them to be more independent. So it's not like, yeah. Mama, where is this? Mm. Uh, Mama, can you get this? I, find this. I don't know and as we, this goes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And as we think about these things too, and we organize our spaces, we must consider who we are organizing for. Mm. Like I said, when we get to talking about that a bit later, we can get into detail. So if, if Carissa is organizing for Kara, then she has to make things that she wants Kara to use accessible to her you cannot put them on the top shelf Mm -hmm. yes unless you don't want her to get to them Um, so it's good for us to do these things because I think it's important to teach that help the children to begin to be independent um, Mm -hmm. as young as possible yeah yeah Um, you also spoke about like um, organizing intangible things and for for me one of the things I had to do was a meal plan and also to set our schedule because like you said mm-hmm. if i'm not organized because I, i'm not just managing homeschool i'm also I'm managing the home as well and if i myself yeah. i'm not organized i don't know what's for lunch i don't know what's for dinner i don't mm. know what we're having for breakfast it just like they are just like little little time sucks out of the day that just make the You're day right. not like as productive as they could be so yeah for me, that was like making a schedule it's a very elaborate and very complicated schedule but I think (laughs) it it's it still works because it it helps me to bring together all of the things that I'm trying to manage at the same time that's right that's that's excellent I can't emphasize that enough I don't do it well enough but I know that when I do that things run smoothly so Mm -hmm. having a breakfast schedule yeah we did that you know this past semester and so every morning um because breakfast is kind of like you know let's mm-hmm. just do this let's just go yeah so I put it up in a little corner in the kitchen even the children will know what it is that we are supposed to have you know mm-hmm. if it's something they need help with um we can help them but a lot of the time 
they can get to it themselves mm. and even things like snacks right because yes, you take having, snack breaks yeah. during the school day mm-hmm. and if if i'm not organized and it's um uh, mom um mom it's snack time mm-hmm. what are we going to have yeah and then i start thinking oh okay do i not go and get apples mm-hmm. to, to cut up or oranges mm-hmm. and that just takes time, time right yeah. But if it's all organized, you can even have it done ahead of time and it's mm-hmm. ready and it's yes. in the fridge. Or yeah. if you have help, for those of us who have help, um, that's a number of people. Like I have my help. I can tell her that this is what's for snack and please have it ready mm-hmm. at 11 yes. so that when it's time, we can just go and get it and keep moving. Yeah, I find that the less distractions there are in our school day, um, the more productive we are and, and the more likely we are to get things done. And so that's why these things are important for us. Yes. Um, Go ahead. For, for us, a lot of our school activities this year are going to involve um, going out. And uh, so yeah. for play dates. And so it, it meant that I also have to plan, like you were saying, I need to plan meals that we can take outside and snacks. And, you know, having mm-hmm. those things prepared beforehand so that, you know, in the morning, I know that, okay, I'm grabbing this and I'm grabbing that and then we can just go. And then that just makes the day feel a little bit like smoother. And if I know, okay, I, we need to have this for dinner, then I can remember to take it out of the freezer, for example, beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All of those things we need yeah. to think about and think through to make sure that the machine is working as efficiently <laughs> as possible. As possible, yes, yes. So it may not sound to you like we're, you're like, are, are we still in a homeschool show here? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. <laughs> but all of yeah. these things, all of yeah. these things do, do, do affect play a part, our, yeah. our homeschool day. Lots of homeschool yes, has to do with the how home things go. as well. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's move along and, and let's talk about if we've, if we've gotten past the sort of general organization structure, can we get more into detail? Mm. And when it comes to organizing our space, we may be speaking to uh, a new homeschooler right now who's just thinking of starting um, homeschooling and setting up their space, mm-hmm. or maybe you're already doing it, but you're just thinking that things are not working or you're looking for better ways to organize and so we're going to discuss some of those things right from uh, where we sit to do school to organizing the smallest things like uh, uh, paper clips <laughs> and things <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Carissa, why don't you start and tell us that what you're doing with Carissa Space and then maybe any ideas that you have in terms of her seating area and mm-hmm. all that. Okay. So, um, for Carissa Space, I'm um, using her her room um, as our homeschool space, although it's not really confined to the room most days. Um, a lot of the times we're in the, the living area, yeah, in the kitchen, wherever she is, we do school. So, <laughs> and, But <laughs> I'm keeping her toys in her room. Um, but like I said, I had to do a lot of reorganizing because our room, um, we moved about six months ago and so I was storing a lot of things in that room and it was very cluttered and um, quite messy so I had to clear all of those things out sort them out and then I put in some repurposed shelves that I could store Mm. her um, her toys on so it's on the ground uh, they're like cabinets yeah top cabinets but then I'm using them as shelving for her toys so I put them on the floor in the in the corner where the wardrobe is supposed to be and then I've arranged her toys there so now she knows where her toys are and then I think it would be very good for us in teaching her how to tidy up because then we can just you know move if if we are cleaning up we know that okay this toy is going here this toy is going there so that's why I wanted that and then never too early to start these things eh? yeah yes but then our books, um, our read aloud books are in the hall because that's usually where we read. So we have this small TV console 
where I have arranged her books. It kind of looks like like in a library arrangement format yeah. yeah so all of her books are there so that's where she knows to go and get books if she wants to read and lots of times you find her sitting um right there reading okay if i say reading but like going oh, through <laughs> going through With her, her books book upside down but reading <laughs> no not upside down like, she knows how to go from you know she knows the, the proper way to read now so, oh, that's <laughs> impressive. Yeah. I thought my kids with books upside down, but to be fair, those were not books with pictures. So, like uh-huh, the Bible okay, the turned Bible. upside down, but with a very serious look. <laughs> look, yeah. Trying that's, to mm, that's hell. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> yeah. So, I think one thing that is left is that I need to get like a small table for her that we can sit mm. at and do like some crafting, maybe like some cutting and gluing and pasting. Um, that's mm-hmm. that's the main thing that I think we are left with. But I've organized all of the other things that we she doesn't necessarily have access to in our small home yeah. office. So we have like some shelves that I have put um, our things on. So uh, we have some manipulatives. Or should I even call them manipulatives? We just have like some like alphabet, magnetic alphabet. I found these little mm-hmm. containers on them from these little clear plastic containers from the market so i put yeah. them inside we have like um we are going to use a few tokens that we have from like games so i also okay. put them in those little containers so that they don't get missing and then um just any all of our other like we have some um scissors and markers and other things i found like little containers from the market they weren't very expensive so I'm just organizing, putting all of those things together. And let's see. I think for the most part, that's it. A lot of the organization had to do with my personal, my stuff that I'm creating for her. Like knowing. Okay. Yes. So um, a friend of mine was selling these mag- magazine holders. So I'm keeping a lot of like my files and things um, in there. Hmm. And then I got these ring binders from... Um, a shop in Accra and so I'm keeping like books that I am reading personally I bound them and like kept uh, um, I have bound them and I'm keeping them in the ring binders and then also um, any curriculum that I have printed off a lot of my curriculum that I have bought is uh, digital so I print them and then so I've I've, um, bound them and then I'm keeping them in the ring binders so Mm -hmm. yeah I think that is the major, those are some of the major things that I have done for her, for her space. I think what is really left now is like just a small table that she can comfortably sit at and do, uh-huh. yeah, some, some, some um, crafting work here. Yeah. That sounds great. I, I can just picture it all as you're talking about mm. it. It's, and it's wonderful when you get organized. Well, I'm that person, okay, guys? <laughs> Organizing is like my I hobby. We are both, I love, we love, are both love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we are a bit much for you on today's yeah. episode. Forgive us. <laughs> but mm. as you describe it, I just feel like, oh, it's like a map, you know, mm. that's been given to you, yeah. that's been laid out so clearly so you can know where you're going from mm. here. I move. You know, mm-hmm. I go the mm-hmm. um or sh- is is a map the right thing? Yes, or yes, you know, a set yes. of directions mm-hmm. here. So for us, um, where do I start? So <laughs> I guess I'm going to walk through this space and I'm going to talk a lot, but this is for the benefit of those who may just be beginning or just yeah. trying to give lots of different examples mm-hmm. for people so that people can have um, some options to choose from. We'll have to wrap up here, but we will continue this conversation in our next episode, so do join us then. Thank you for listening to the Homeschool Conversations Africa podcast.